When it comes to genres and subgenres that aren't usually notable to the average person that is just a top 40s listener or an average pop or hip hop fan, there will always be moments in history, both musical and culturally, that a certain album or a certain band or a certain artist will rise above that crust and become something that puts themselves out there in front of eyes that would have never otherwise been exposed to that type of music. It is a very case-by-case -case basis when something like this skyrockets into popularity and becomes something that is put in front of so many different people that would have never been exposed to it otherwise. It can be a perfect storm type of situation where a combination of cultural factors, musical factors, and just the perfect timing of something is the primary reason that something can really become popular and something can become timeless. Metal is probably the biggest example of things like this happening. There have been so many records and so many bands throughout the decades that have become popular because of movies or television or a celebrity endorsing them or talking about them in an interview. You were rocking out to the music. You like music, man? I love music. I love every kind of music, but recently I've really started to get into this thrash metal music. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about it, man, that I just can't let go. It's great, it's great. There's this one band out that's called uh, Napalm Death. Or just in general, the internet making it more accessible and more possible for people to explore different musical avenues that they wouldn't have known otherwise. But most of the time when things like this happen, it's a genre that is probably more well known, something like death metal or even black metal, something that even if you aren't into metal, you have probably heard the term thrown around at one point. But to have a genre so idiosyncratic and off the beaten path to even the average metal listener, let alone the average music listener, such as funeral doom metal, to have a band and to have an album that sort of transcends the genre line and becomes so popular is practically unheard of practically unheard of unless you are one band in particular. That band and the band I will be talking about today being Bellwitch. Now, I would be making this video even if it wasn't necessarily something that I thought people cared about. And that is because I have adored Bellwitch ever since I discovered them when I was getting into more down-tempo and extreme forms of metal. Most of the time, when people think of extreme forms of metal, they think of fast, they think of frantic, and vocals that you can't understand, album arts you cannot read, nothing beautiful, nothing savory, nothing too, too like slow. Low. It is always going to be a taxing and enveloping experience that is just busting your head in pretty much. But on the flip side of that, there are numerous genres that pretty much pace themselves and really value distance in a composition and value atmosphere in a composition. Genres like DSBM, drone metal, sludge metal, post metal, doom metal, and funeral doom metal come to mind. Now while doom metal is much more of a well-known commodity in the musical landscape with bands like St. Vetus and Black Sabbath putting it on the map even back as far as the 60s and the 70s, funeral doom metal is a genre that came much later. It was a genre that was basically birthed with the idea of pacing something to such a degree where riffs were strung out as much as they possibly could. Sometimes these bands employed vocals, other times they did not. But the primary thing that they always focused on was a slow paced composition and production that was extremely lathered, taking everything wall to wall and making it consume the mix in such 
an auditorily uncomfortable way that disarmed the listener and put them into a completely crushing mindset, oftentimes trying to give you this feeling of hopelessness and depression and making you sort of unlock that side of you through music. Much like a lot of depressive and sadder bands on the metal and rock map, Bellwitch came from Seattle, Washington. They were formed in 2010 and were almost immediately signed to Profound Lore Records after their 2011 demo when Profound Lore basically picked them up considering they do like to shine a light on a variety of different extreme subgenres and genres of metal. Now the thing about them is they famously just do not have a lead guitarist, they never did. They had vocals, they had bass, and they had percussion, and that was the only thing that pretty much was in their entire style. Now I would say they started off as what you would consider to be a pretty normal funeral doom metal and drone metal or sludge metal band. Slow compositions, very depressive album covers, and overall their aesthetic wasn't anything you had never really heard before in the style. But in the year 2017, this band blew up in a way that you rarely see metal bands in general, let alone idiosyncratic genre bands blow up with their album Mirror Reaper. The context behind this record is something that has affected a lot of bands, and it's something I wouldn't mind making a video on in and of itself, and that is death. In 2016, their drummer, Adrian, who had also done vocals on other records, he died, and unfortunately this shook the band pretty much to their core. Obviously this wasn't heavily publicized in terms of what their next move was, but I don't think that people necessarily would have assumed that following this they would immediately return with a record in 2017, only two years after their last record for Phantoms. And the difference between Mirror Reaper and every other record that Bellwitch will ever release past this point or have ever released prior to it is it dealt with death in a completely disharmonious and enthralling way is pretty much the only way that I can phrase that. Mirror Reaper immediately received widespread acclaim from pretty much every metal publication, every metal reviewer, every metal interviewer. It caught so much attention from every channel, every magazine, every website. It didn't matter what side of the internet you touched. Bellwitch were pretty much becoming a household name for metalheads. Now the genius behind Mirror Reaper, a little bit of background about it without going too terribly much into it to where I ruin it for anyone that hasn't heard it before or hasn't heard it in a while, I highly implore you to go back and listen to it because this thing is monstrous. It is one song, an 80 minute song. But the thing about that is, as a whole, a lot of people like to fixate on the fact that it's just one song and that it's so long. But people that are familiar with funeral doom metal and just very, very slow albums from like drone metal and sludge metal and post metal, this isn't really uncommon. It's not uncommon to have an album that goes on this long. And there have been plenty of albums from across the entire metal sphere that have just been comprised of one single song. I don't think these are naturally the things that just make this album stand out above the rest in the metal sphere. I think the genius with Bell Witch's Mirror Reaper is not just how they approach writing funeral doom metal, but how they approach writing music as a whole. I have always been a metal massive advocate in music of any kind for atmosphere and evoking some sort of atmospheric layer or element that provides a scene, that provides vivid imagery, and pretty much brings the listener into their world. You can listen to a hundred records that are so extreme, but not really remember any of them or be able to tie any specific feeling unless you have a maybe a memory or a friend or a moment in your life that is shared with that album. Mirror Reaper on the other hand is one of those albums that only come around once in a while because of how it's fueled. It's no surprise that since the dawn of time, art, music, painting, writing, poetry, it doesn't matter. Anytime there is such a traumatic event or just a tragic emotion, art pretty much always finds a way to breathe, always finds a way to exist. And when you are 
an artist, you are naturally going to escalate that when you have another traumatic event. And the perfect storm of this already being a band that had a texture to their sound that was sad, that was depressive, that was emotionally powerful, it pretty much just leveraged that in such a way that Mirror Reaper came out sounding like a funeral dirge, pun unintended, this lament towards the past. And when you take into account the fact that there are previously unreleased, or I should say unused lyrics from Adrian on this record that are very haunting, the death growls that are layered and added onto this record, how atmospheric the composition is, even though this is one song and just one song within one album, it does feel like an event. It feels like a cinematic masterpiece, even though it is a piece of music music, with each riff ringing out in such a way that it brings forth this dark and deep haunting feeling of you feeling exactly what the musicians working on this album were feeling. And the amplified production on this record makes it even more apparent. I know I haven't talked much about the production because I think thematically a lot of the power of this record comes in the background of it and the sound of it, but the production in my opinion is the primary thing that gives this record such a push. On albums like Longing and Four Phantoms that came before this album in their demo, their dark and macabre, dingy style oftentimes, while I wouldn't say it was raw, it was certainly less produced and more scant and focused more on the texture of the dark and the haunting as opposed to making it feel like a movement, like a push. But whereas their previous records had felt sort of like this push and pull, Mirror Reaper feels more like a downward turn, like a spiral, like you are just losing yourself into this dark abyss and pit that is endless. And it's so easy if you are just zoned out listening to this album. It's difficult to sometimes pick it apart when you go to re-listen to it, because if you are just sitting and not doing anything else, not using it as background music, it completely captivates you and just locks you into this mindset, into this emotion, into this feeling that is pretty much endless, where you you just don't know where the end is, where it lies, because it just keeps ringing on and on. And that's not to say that this record isn't progressively dense, it definitely is. There are a lot of moments on this record that even though it is a funeral doom metal record, the progressions and just the natural little ways that they transition from portion to portion on this record makes it feel like even though this is a single song written from a single song perspective, it really does play out like an entire album or just an entire movie with multiple acts, multiple scenes. And I think what connected a lot to people that had never listened to this type of music before and got into it is music as a whole, in my personal opinion, and people might disagree with this, is a universal tongue. I think that when you have an emotion that is evocative and when it's coming from a place of genuine emotion, it's going to hit the person that is reading or listening or watching in a powerful way regardless of what walk of life or what taste they are coming from. I think it's a similar reason that Deaf Heaven Sunbather connected with a lot of people that didn't like black metal or black gaze music up until that point. There is a big difference between trying to write something from a place where you do not have experience and trying to make something out of nothing and making something out of something so raw and something so aggressive and visceral within the human psyche and spirit that it carries on that message through its music, even in so many of the portions of this record where there aren't vocals, the instrumental speaks volumes. And while a lot of times when there's an album that generates a lot of hype in the metal sphere, there is sort of this doggy pile mentality, or I should say this bandwagon mentality of one person says it's amazing that has a voice, and people see that that does well, and people want a yes man, and so they just sort of mindlessly agree, like a high mind. I don't think that this was some droning hive mind with Mirror Reaper. The reviews and the people that talked about this album were genuine. But the thing is, is it's hard to unpack and it's hard to talk about because how do you unpack an album that is just one track, 84 minutes, and coming from such a lofty emotional place? 
it's almost impossible. But for those of you that haven't went back and re-listened to Mirror Reaper for a while, I highly suggest doing so. This album's breathtaking, it's gorgeous, it is a lament for the ages, and I think anyone that is in any sort of emotional spot or can call upon an emotional spot in them, listening to this record, you will feel something. And even if this isn't your type of music, I genuinely recommend this. If you have not listened to it, it will take you to a place that you may have never been before with music. But what are your thoughts of Bell Witch and Mirror Reaper? Do you think that the hype was too much? Do you enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? Be sure to let me know down in the comments section below. Go support the band and Profound Lore Records. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris and I'm signing off saying fair well.